Hello everyone, so this week's topic is actually something that I never really thought about in the context of global health, and it's received relatively little attention in the field. This week's topic is the surgical burden of disease, following a lecture by Dr. Brian Cameron, a pediatric surgeon with a, spe with a special interest in global surgery. So there's an article I read by Farmer and Kim, and I'll post the reference in the link below. Um, but they talk about some potential reasons why it is that the surgical burden of disease has received le relatively little attention in the field of global health, and why some students like me might not even have considered the challenges in delivering surgical care in underserved areas. So first of all, I think people tend to think of surgery as something very complex. And it is. It requires not only a surgeon, but a fully equipped operating room, an anesthesiologist, blood from the blood bank, and the list goes on and on. But that being said, Dr. Cameron makes the extremely valid point that other public health initiatives are also very complex. Vaccines are often hailed as an extremely simple way to eradicate infectious disease. All you have to do is provide enough vaccines and the population will be vaccinated, right? Wrong. Many vaccines need to be kept cold until they are delivered to the patient, or else they won't be effective. What happens if the truck carrying the vaccines breaks down in the heat, or the cooler leaks, or there's no refrigerator, etc, etc. There are many factors to consider when providing vaccines to a rural population, just as there are many factors to consider when seeking to reduce the surgical burden of disease. So in case you don't remember a few weeks back when we talked about DALIs, they take into account not only a shortened life, but they also introduce the loss of quality of life due to disability. So different illnesses and disabilities are assigned a disability weight. Death would be zero on the disability scale, while one would be considered perfect health. Prior to Dr. Cameron's lecture, I would not have guessed that surgical interventions would have been overly cost effective. Meaning, I would have guessed that the costs associated with a surgical intervention would have far outweighed the benefits that would have resulted in savings. That said, Dr. Cameron highlights a number of examples that demonstrate that in fact, surgical interventions are extremely cost effective. So for example, surgical programs for essential surgical services cost only 11 to $33 per disability adjusted life year saved, or DALI for short. This would include procedures such as treating a fracture, treating a stab wound, or providing cesarean section services. For comparison, rotavirus vaccine in Vietnam cost $540 per DALI. In addition, Therapeutic feeding in Zambia cost $53 per DALI, so that just goes to show just how cost-effective surgical interventions are. So we ended off class by having a debate, and we were split into three groups, um, debating whether funds in global health should be allocated towards chronic disease, infectious disease, or surgical disease. And the debate became quite heated, actually, and some students were really struggling with the idea of... Um, kind of a vertical approach and giving funds to just a disease as opposed to a horizontal approach. Um, and I think the article by Farmer and Kim kind of mediates this, this struggle that some students were having. And I'll just read that quote to end off this week. And it says that global health need not be a competitive race for scarce resources. If we join forces with international health experts, with activists, and with those setting health policies, we can build a coherent movement that can include surgery.